Senator from Charleston. Uh, Matt, I'd like to deliver a matter of personal interest, my farewell speech. You are recognized for a point of personal interest. And while I'm coming, um, in recognition of Dr. St. John's prayer with respect to self-love, uh, <laughs> I'm going to direct the clerk to show the video of myself. The Senate is so informed. <laughs> and the Senate, the Senate as hard as it could be with the senator from Charleston coming to the podium, will be in order for his video. State your inquiry. Does a direction to the clerk equate to unanimous consent? Uh, no, so this has been reviewed. It, it's, this, it meets the requirement under uh, the sense, the, 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 under the president's order. Well, Senator from Charleston. Senator Kimson, you want? Just got back from the White House. <laughs> to thank the president. Thank the president for sending all that money to the state of South Carolina so we can do good. So we can do good. Do, 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 do good. Do good. We're in a pandemic. Upon hours, upon hours, upon hours, upon hours, upon. And I said, I hate to get in the way of a good Republican fight. You can't put lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig. You can put it on there, but it's still a pig. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, just got back from the White House. That would be me. And we're not going to confuse the issue. We're going to be very clear. But I could not in good conscience keep my seat. This is one of those seminal moments where you got to pick a side. You got to pick a side. You're going to stand with the worker. Women deserve the right to choose in the state of South Carolina. I've already stated that I'd never smoked marijuana. I said the last time I took the podium, we're in a pandemic. Just got back from the White House. Hours upon hours upon hours upon hours. Never smoked marijuana. I drink plenty of brown liquor. Upon hours upon hours upon hours. We're in a pandemic. We're in a pandemic. And I said, I hate to get in the way of a good Republican fight, but I could not in good conscience keep my seat. Women deserve the right to choose in the state of South Carolina, and we are sending the wrong message if we pass this bill. This is one of those seminal moments where you got to pick a side. You got to pick a side. And either you're going to stand with the worker or you're going to kowtow to big government. I asked the secretary, 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 what are all of those projects on that PowerPoint? And she said, Senator, that would be me. She said, Senator, we are getting an influx, in, 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 influx of cash to thank President Joe Biden for sending all that money so we can do good. Do, 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 do good, do good to the state of South Carolina so we can do good. Introduce my two beautiful children, Marley and then Marlon.
This is my. Uh -uh. <laughs> you know, quite frankly, and I think the body knows this. Quite frankly, I don't care if people don't listen to me. I am uh, comfortable talking to myself. I'm, I, I'm very, I'm very comfortable talking to myself. Sometimes I look in the mirror and say, self, that would be me. You're a good looking man. Senator from Charles. Thank you, thank you so much, Mr. President. To the leaders, to the leaders of both parties, the majority leader and the minority leader, to the caucus staffs, Senate clerk and the staff of the Senate, to my wonderful secretary, Carol Collins, I rise today to thank the people of Senate District 42 for electing me to serve in this August body for almost a decade now. When I was first sworn in this chamber, I brought my little baby Marley, who is not quite a year old yet. She'll be 10 uh, June 11th next month. Little Marlin wasn't even born yet, and he'll be six years old on this Saturday. They're truly blessed to have dedicated parents. But what I've learned over the last 10 years is that my kids aren't impressed with my professional achievements. <laughs> they measure love by how much time I spend with them. To them, love equals time. As you all know, I've been appointed by the President, President Joseph R. Biden, to serve as a White House appointee to the Advisory Committee for Trade Policy and Negotiations. While this is not a full-time job, I cannot in good conscience put this role, this new role, on top of my Senate position, maintain a full-time, robust law practice, and spend quality time with my children. Love equals time. And that's why I'm giving this farewell address. At the outset of this journey, I pledge to the people of District 42 that I would come up here and work hard every day, that I would not cower that I would not cower in the face of adversity, but stand resolute to, make, resolute to make sure that every child could get a good education, Senator from Spartanburg, that every child and every adult could breathe clean air and taste clean water, and that every citizen in this state would have the opportunity to live the American dream. And that's what I said then when I gave my speech in January of 2014 and at, from this well. And that's what I did while I was here in the Senate. God puts people in place at the right time. I was here at the right time, not long after I was sworn in. An unarmed motorist was pulled over in North Charleston, my Senate district for a traffic violation. His name was Walter Scott, Jr. 
In fear that he was going back to jail for some unpaid child support, Walter ran on foot and was shot in the back multiple times by a police officer. And when you read the police officer's statement, you would have thought that he deserved the order of the Palmetto. But what we found out, it was totally unsupported by the facts. And but for a cell phone video which captured the entire incident on tape, he might have gotten a promotion. But this body, this body, understood that the best evidence is by video. The best evidence is by video, and together, Democrats and Republicans, we worked to pass the Body Camera Act, becoming the first state in the nation to do so. About 60 days after that, the world witnessed, and we've talked about it a lot, one of the most heinous crimes ever imagined in Senate District 42. The cold-blooded murder of nine parishioners who were gathered for prayer, including one of our own, Senator Clemente Pickney. They were murdered by a homegrown terrorist who had been known to wear the Confederate battle flag. This body, Republicans and Democrats, banded together to remove that flag in front of this state house so that we could show solidarity, unity, and togetherness and rid this state from a polarizing symbol that continued to invite us, divide us. While I was here, we fought big ag. We fought big chicken. And we fought big tobacco. We also fought for marketplace fairness for our mom and pop stores who compete against big companies and retailers who were selling on the internet without collecting sales tax. And we passed a bill so that mom and pop stores who employ our citizens, pay local taxes, sponsor our local baseball teams, and contribute to our state are not at a competitive disadvantage and to date, this legislation has generated for the state more than $1.5 billion for the state of South Carolina. Transformative economic legislation for our citizens. We fought for children who work more than the average American work week while practicing and training and competing on Saturday on the football fields and basketball courts across our states, mainly for two flagship universities. And now these young student athletes, Senator from Warree, can profit from their own name, likeness, and image. We've done a lot of great things, but there's so much more to do. If we can marshal our efforts to pass a bill to give a German-owned automobile company, Scout Motors, $2 billion in a matter of weeks without much debate. We can certainly raise the minimum wage, pass hate crime legislation, and expand Medicaid for people in South Carolina. In closing, there's a quote by Nelson Mandela. There is no passion to be found playing small. You know, I dream about big things. There's no passion to be found playing small. In settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. But going forward, it'll be up to y'all, each and every one of you. Now, while I won't be here, I'm going to be generous and leave with you with the next best thing. I'm going to continue to grace my present, grace you with my presence, and I'm leaving you all with my blow up, my life size image of myself that I'm going to ask Carol to bring.
to the floor very quickly. Now, Marlon, too, doesn't have quite the personality. Bring, bring up to the podium. Marlon, too, doesn't have quite the personality. But if I must say so myself, he will be a constant reminder of my charge to each of you. To my charge of each of you. You are never wrong for doing the right thing. Go do great things for all of the people of this great state. I suspect you will all miss me greatly. <laughs> and just know you can have one of these in your office to receive my wise counsel daily. In recognition of District 42, these will be on sale for $42. <laughs> and 90 cents, 90 because I've been reelected by 90% of the vote. <laughs> Unopposed. <laughs> this is a great place, this is a great. Seriously folks, as I take my seat, there's a hymn we sang while I was a little boy growing up on the choir right down the street, St. John Baptist Church, Reverend Roscoe C. Wilson, my pastor. That's Asia Wilson's granddaddy. And don't worry, I'm not going to sing to him. But the words were, may, I look, may the work I've done speak for me. I hope that the work I've done speaks volumes for this great state. Colleagues, it's been an honor of a lifetime to represent Senate District 42 in the great state of South Carolina. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Hey, thank you, thank you, Senator. Senator, <laughs> Senator from Charleston is recognized. Thank you, Senator, for your service. Thank you, thank you so much. I'll, t I'll take one question. Sen Senator right. from Charleston, Senator Sin, what purpose do you rise? See if he would let me ask that one question. The one question is what, Senator Yields for your question. So in keeping with your humble speech, I did realize that you forgot one little fact, and um, I think the whole body needs to find out at the same time I do, because I've always been curious about this. I heard that at one point you had a birthday party with a life-size ice sculpture. Is that true and what was it of? That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> the Senate is so informed. <laughs> <laughs>